Hey everybody, David Henry here from LearnSageLighting.com. Welcome to another day of 30 days to becoming a lighting ninja. Gosh, it's already 22 here. Can you believe it? June 22nd, and uh, if you haven't caught on to this by now, I do shoot these um, a little bit ahead of time, just in case, um, you know, my schedule or whatnot doesn't permit me to get in here and do a quality job for you. So I'm, I'm always a little bit ahead, but day 22 here. Let's talk about priority. So when you're working with an old school console, and this is how I learned, okay, and this is a bit for everybody here today, okay, whether you're new to lighting, whether you've done lighting for a while, whether you've got a basic console, whether you've got a complex console. And the way that I learned lighting was on an HTP old style theatrical console, an ETC Express actually, and uh, Expression Series consoles. And, and those were the consoles that I learned on first. And when I worked in those consoles, I would bring faders up. And when I wanted to change those lights to do something else with them, I needed to first bring those faders down. I needed to release, I needed to subtract from the look on stage. When I got to moving light consoles, and the first console that I learned was the Hog 2, um, then the Hog 3. But regardless, when I got to moving light consoles, I quickly learned, as, as I had a mentor, thankfully, walking me through this, thanks, Zach, um, that in a moving light console, usually you want to think about it a different way. Because in a moving light console, it's not highest takes precedence, it's actually latest takes precedence. And so if you're working with DMXs and using channel masking, if you're working with D-Pro, if you're working with the Light Shark, if you're working with MPC, Whatever software that you're working with, the best way in most of these consoles to do something new with a particular light on the stage, say, for example, we want to go ahead and we've got a cue playing, okay, with all of our lights in it and they're all turned to blue, okay? And now we want to take and turn five of those lights to red, okay? But we want to leave the rest alone. Well, then... When you want to do that in a console, you can't release the cue that turns everything blue because it's going to release everything and, and you're going to have nothing. And you could then bring up something that turns the five red, but you wouldn't have the whole look. Similarly, you could make another cue or cue list or preset, whatever it's called in your console, that goes ahead and turns everything blue, and then you turn the five lights red. So the five lights are red, and all the other lights, however many there are, are blue. And that works, but now you've got a cue that only goes ahead and turns everything blue except those five lights, which are red. But we can do better than that. And so in a moving light console, the way that you really begin to think, and in a modern lighting console, is less about turning things off so you, you've played back a cue, you've turned some lights, a color, you've put them in a position, whatever. And the next thing you want to do in your head, and this is a big mind shift if you're used to those older consoles. It took me quite a while to learn. What you want to do is instead of saying, okay, how do I release these lights? How do I let them go? What you want to do is say, okay, how can I override these lights with something new? And when you override them with something new, then all of a sudden, they're, they're going to transition. Those lights are going to be controlled by that new cue. You don't have to pull back the old cue. In fact, in most consoles, when you override an old cue completely, once you've completely overridden that old cue, every parameter that's touched in that cue has been overridden by something new, then it's just going to go away. It's just going to release quietly. But even if you haven't overridden the whole thing, in a lot of consoles, you can reassert that cue and bring it to the foreground, bring it to the latest. And so this was just kind of a brief overview of something we call LTP latest takes precedence, which is kind of opposite um, of HTP, highest takes precedence. But if you're used to working with these other consoles or you've gotten in this mindset and now you're moving on to a software base or a newer console, then this is a mind shift that's going to have to take place. But once this mind shift does take place for you and, and you understand how to really control inside of one of these consoles, it really sets you free to do 
the best things possible. So, guys, thank you so much for joining us so far. Um, if you haven't, go ahead and just share this on your YouTube or Facebook or somewhere else like that. And, of course, be sure to subscribe below and click the bell for the latest. I can't wait to be back with you tomorrow. I'm going to talk about how to keep timing live in your console and, and different ways that you can do that so that you're able to always be nimble on your feet when you're working on a show. I'll see you guys back here tomorrow. Thanks.